What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com. Dawson's Fish Tanks bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. Notice your boy D's hobbling around with no crutches. That's right, off crutches. Still a little weaker than E, but thanks for all the love and uh, talking to you all live uh, on YouTube, Facebook. And I uh, took too many perfect steps and started talking to people on Instagram. That's another story. So thanks for all the love on the knee surgery. It appears to be healing up well. Uh, here's a video of what I've had going on in the greenhouse, but it's Sunday. It's Species Sunday. I got not one but two species at the end of this video I want to show you that I've never put on camera before. Check it out. So today I want to bring you an inside look at what we have going on inside the greenhouse. I want to show you how I'm adding more tanks for this massive import. I'm also going to tell you why I'm using which tanks for what. I'll be showing you how I drill tanks and what to watch for. But it's Sunday. It's Species Sunday. I've got some new plans to show you as well from this import. Okay, so the biggest thing is the amount of water available for each plant. The deal with importing is the more you buy, the more you save. Between all the duties, importing fees, bonds, shipping, trans shipping, the whole deal. Take a lot of these all back, dude. One by one by one. One by one? I mean, whatever. I, I, I can't carry more than two or three. Augusto. So then I am now crowded with plants. And while these are only plants, they are a living thing, and as far as I'm concerned, they are a starving living thing. Not sure if any of you have ever taken a transcontinental flight, but 12 hours on a plane is brutal. Imagine if it were 48 hours in a star. Watch out, the beast! I'm bitching out because I got a bad leg. Okay, so what's up with the plants? Well, the plants are coming in deprived of light and any nutrients. They also haven't been in water for a while. We need to make it easy to provide Watch both out. light and those nutrients. Oh, now, yeah, if son. these were plants that I was going to set up for myself, I would want to feed them at their roots and I would plant them down in dirt Looking or some sharp. other good substrate. Nice. Looking good. Alter anthera, tell anthera. Looking gorgeous. This situation, it's all about water changes fast and easy ones. Now I'm gonna drill some tanks here and show you how I do it. But first, why drill tanks instead of running siphons? Okay, for years I have drained tanks with siphons and while it works great, you have to make sure the siphon isn't broken. If you bump the PVC the wrong way, it breaks the siphon, you lose the siphon. Also, periodically you will get something caught in a tube or clog. This isn't a huge time killer, but it does take an extra four minutes and it adds up quickly. Four minutes times 10 tanks is 40 minutes. As I said in last week's video, in the words of Nasty Nas, time is money when it comes to mind, take it in blood. There's no question that drilling tanks is more work up front. While it's more work up front, it's worth it in the long run. As an added benefit, once the tanks are drilled, I can run standing pipes so that the water will overflow out only when the water reaches a certain predetermined level that I set. So I can walk away and I don't have to worry about the water overflowing as I do a water change. In fact, it will overflow down into the tank below. Pretty sexy, huh? Set it and forget it. Speaking of sexy, drilling tanks is like losing wet. your virginity. You might not be the best at it your first time. You might go too quickly. You might not have a big enough hole. Or you might leave the room crying because you messed something up. Use protection, folks. Cover up your eyes. You don't want glass spraying up in your face and making you blind. How do we get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. If it's your first time drilling a tank, I recommend that you do some test drilling on a few broken tanks. Why not? Grab a broken tank and drill some holes. Here's how I drill tanks. First, use a good drill. I know a number of people who use drill press. If you have a drill press and you can set up a tank in there, even better. I'm using a crappy handheld drill here. Second, drill a template. I use the bit that's made for glass and I drill through the wood first as a guide. I'm not sure drilling tanks is even possible without some sort of a guide like this. This step is actually the hardest part because you have to get the bit down in there to make that hole. Once you get a piece of wood with a nice hole in it, the rest of it is actually pretty easy. I have seen people that use a piece of glass on either side of the actual glass they are drilling in the tank. This makes sense because you sandwich the glass on either side so when you're drilling through, you're less likely to splinter off the glass of the hole. Also, use really nice clamps so everything is held tightly in place. 
Now we are getting ready to drill. But before you drill, make sure you measure where your hole is going to be and look to see how closely the bulk head will fit. I have drilled tanks too closely to the edge and cracked them trying to tighten up a bulkhead only to realize it was up against some trim. Now let's talk about bulkhead location. As I showed you last week, I'm running these in the middle of a tank or lower. Now a note on this. If you have the right bulkhead, you can fit a pipe on either side of it and use an elbow down inside the tank. You will still be siphoning essentially, but it will work. The added benefit to this is that if something happens to your fitting, and your tank starts to drain, it will only drain down to the level of the hole. If your hole is halfway down, you're gonna drain your tank halfway down. Hindsight has been 20-20 for me with drilling bulkheads. Initially, I used two small of fittings and the hole. Ask me how many times I've had to dig a snail out of a too small of a hole and an overflowing tank. This is fine in the greenhouse. Let this happen inside and watch how fast my wife would cut my nuts off. Okay, so we have cut a bunch of holes. Like losing your virginity, you should be getting progressively better over time. I'm going to stick with the sex analogies here for just a second and say that while drilling tanks, the slower you go, the better. hey -o. You want to rinse out all that stuff out of there. and They say to get rid of the uh, shredded glass or whatever it makes the bit last longer, too. I'm going to pull my mind out of the gutter for a second, but you do want to make sure that while you're drilling, the spot you're drilling is heavily lubricated. I keep a cup of water handy and constantly pouring water over the hole, rinsing out the little bits of glass shards. If you leave the glass shards in there, you're not rinsing, you will actually decrease the life expectancy of your expensive bit. So rinse often, it makes work easier. All right, so now I can do quick water changes, bam. But we still need to be concerned about the overcrowded plants and having stagnant water. We go back to the beastly air pump for this. Check out this badass air pump. Yep. This thing is a gangsta. Notice it's on styrofoam, keeps it a little quieter, and then this can be quieted just a little bit. These aren't made for your average fish tank keeper. These are the fish room special. Note, this pump, unlike the piston kinds, is incredibly quieter. I have been in fish rooms and pet shops and all you hear is this high-pitched whistling sound of a piston-driven air pump. Forget that. I've got this sucker down here in a box and it's money. I had it unplugged and not hooked up for many years because it's a little more feng shui, a little more zen in the greenhouse without it. But she's back. I used to keep her up high and close to the 25 valve setup, but now she's down on the floor in a box on a piece of styrofoam under a tank, which does reduce the noise a little bit. You can still hear it, but it's not that bad. Now, why am I doing this? Well, we want surface agitation and as much atmospheric air as possible in our tanks. Here is a graph of what is made up of the air we breathe. Yes, lots and lots of nitrogen. Additionally, there is going to be some dead plant matter producing ammonia. We want to gas that off as quickly as possible by pulling the water to the surface. Straight up, the tank, the plants, the fish, whatever, are all happier with better gas exchange and with water flow. For the cost of some cheap airline tubing and some cheap air stones, this is totally worth it. I've got a 25 gang run. They run all over the greenhouse and I can adjust them here by just a little flip of these little levers. But it's Sunday, it's Species Sunday. I got two species show that I'm pumped to be playing with right now, got in from this import. Check it out. The first one, rotate the camera around here, is uh, we'll start with Kabamba right here. Now look, I haven't uh, messed with Kabamba. It's actually a really, really easy beginner plant. You would have think I would have messed with it long ago. I haven't, I don't really mess with it. Uh, this is green Kabamba, Kabamba Carolina, Carolina, something like that. It's Carolyn's in the name or whatever. But uh, this is native to North and South America. Um, hardy plant likes, I found it likes a hard cut to be replanted. So this is Kab green Kabamba. There's another a couple varieties, start with a P. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of them that are not quite as hardy. But this green has been good. This stuff is great for any kind of like uh, baby fish or anything that needs to be uh, protected or little fry could either live in it or the stuff that the fry eats 
could live on it in the fry, could eat off of that. So definitely check out Kabamba. There's also purple varieties of Kabamba. I mean, this stuff is pretty cool. I'm liking it, but folks, I've said it once, I'll say it again. If something, hell, after the knee surgery, if something were to happen to me, make sure Jungle Val is in my coffin. Check out Skinny Val, folks. This is Valicinaria Nana. Now, I haven't even planted this stuff yet, but it's already, at, it's only been floating, but it's showing me new growth. So I'm super, super pumped about that. It gets a lot longer. I, I had it come in, you know, about that long. It melted, came back though. So I'm really, really enjoying this plant. Haven't even really started playing with it. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like in Escape. Skinny Val, I mean, just like other Val, will melt back, uh, you know, will come back, likes uh, a good substrate. This has been floating and doing just fine. So that is what's up. Let me know what you think about Kabamba. Let me know what you think about this skinny Nana Val. Both available are on DustinsFishTanks.com if you want to check them out. Support your boy. But I got to tell you, folks, thanks again for all the love on the knee. It felt good. Everyone's like, you know, telling me what's up and, th and saying get well soon and all that. Feels good to be, uh, be loved through YouTube and all that. Uh, make sure you're clicking the not only subscribe button, but the notification. So when I go live, you get an update on that and click, click there. See how you do it. Hit the notifications button. You'll get notified of stuff I got going on. AGA is coming up this weekend. I will not be able to attend. I'm going to be at the American Girl Doll Store in Columbus for my daughter's birthday. Not to mention the knee is 100%. I'm not trying to get on a flight. So everybody have a blast out there at the AGA. Got Reef of Palooza Orlando the week after that. I'm going to try to make it to the uh, American Live Bears. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. So check that out. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Hit the uh, both subscribe and the notifications button. You get notifications. I'm doing the live. It's fun. I got Josh. He can do all the work in here while I talk to you all. Uh, typically Tuesdays at noon, sometimes later in the week as well. Everybody have a fabulous freaking week and tank on. Later. That looks like a, that looks like jungle, like, like some type of jungle fox tail. Oh, dude, yeah. It's, 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 it's the main plant, though. Yeah? Yeah, it's not easy. Alright, dude, I don't know where the hell we put all these. <laughs>